So yeah, it has been a long time coming for this build. Uh, long time viewers and subs of the channel um, kind of remember how long ago I first put together the Swashbuckler, my uh, Rapier and Blunderbuss bleed build. And when I first put it together, it was um, pretty strong, but I never really felt like it was complete. And as time went on and we got season one and season two, uh, the build kind of just kept feeling weaker and weaker. Uh, but once we got the kind of initial patch notes of what was going to be added to the game in Season 3, um, I knew for a fact that this was going to be the strongest build that I've pretty much ever put together in this game, uh, without a doubt. But yeah, let's kind of jump into it here. Taking a look at the attributes... Um, they're kind of a little bit all over the place, and uh, the reason for that is um, we don't really want raw stats uh, for damage because not only are we using finisher, um, but we're burning a bleed build, and you don't get damage on a bleed setup through raw damage. Um, not only that, but they've also added um, a ton of new breakpoints, and that's really the reason why I have my stats kind of split up so much. Um, the really important ones being the 250 int and 150 dex. Um, they added even more damage over time. Uh, so our flourish and finish that procs our bleeds are going to be doing even more damage now. Um, 25 strength uh, just to give ourselves a little bit more damage because we are getting a lot of damage from finisher. Obviously, um, you know people are, are going crazy over the 15%, but it's actually even more than that. Um, when you have at least uh, 50 int, you get another 5% damage increase uh, to targets affected with a damage over time, and then you also get another 5% um, from unerring in the blood tree. So whenever you hit somebody with a tondo, you're getting um, a 25% damage increase. And I wanted to just kind of buff the main portion of our damage uh, outside of the bleed pops which is our rapier lights and heavies um so i want to dip into that 25 strength and we end up getting way more value than just that five percent because of obviously finisher um the 25 focus is to not only help with just our overall ability cooldown which is honestly one of the strongest ways to build really any game or any build in this game excuse me um, lower cooldowns means you get to cast abilities more often and more often than your opponent. 
um, but also for uh, finisher or flourishing finish. And I'll kind of go into that in a little bit in the video. Um, but besides that, we are running 150 constitution. Um, it might kind of look like a weird setup, but once you kind of see the build uh, in action, it is uh, a pretty ridiculous setup. Now, jumping into the rapier, um, obviously we're running a bleed setup, uh, but before we get into the perks and everything, um, as happy as it makes me to see so many more people running the rapier, uh, being that we have this artifact for it now in the game, it also hurts my heart to see people really not taking the time to learn or understand the weapon and what makes it good and running setups that don't use evade. Um, I'm going to go kind of more in depth on this in another video so we don't spend a whole bunch of time on this, but um, plain and simple, if you are running the rapier and not using evade, you are not using the weapon properly. Um, and I really don't say that often for really anything else in the game. Um, you know, depending on who you ask, a lot of people will say there's certain metas for certain weapons um, and there's certain abilities you have to use. I'm generally of the opinion that I like to experiment with things and use, uh, you know, off meta things like incinerate um, or only one perk of Skyward for rends and stuff like that, etc. But when it comes to the rapier, um, evade is just too good not to use. It allows you to do too many things and gives you too much damage and utility for you not to use this. Um, and even if you don't want to go back in my channel and kind of look over the two plus years that I've used the weapon and not only showing what it has been able to do, but giving tips and uh, tricks on how to use a weapon and how to get better with it, just slot it on for yourself and use it for a little bit and kind of just see for yourself how good it is. But um, I'm definitely going to do an updated rapier guide at some point soon. But uh, yeah, sorry, rant aside, um, we are running evade with all the passives, swiftness, red curtains, and I normally run controlled breathing. Um, but I wanted to go for on guard because as I mentioned, um, any extra damage increase you can get is going to be that much more uh, crazy on top of finisher. But besides that, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, unerring, refreshing strikes, uh, everything in flourish and finish, and everything in tondo. Um, it's pretty simple for the rapier tree. But uh, on our blunderbuss tree, um, I really, really wanted to get as much utility as I could on my back weapon because that is the thing that you are trading out for running a bleed setup on the rapier is the utility grace is a pretty sustained um, amount of damage with a lot of utility through evade and flush um, but you trade those for a ton of damage with the bleed tree so you really got to consider your back weapon and how it's going to mesh with the bleed tree and your playstyle to kind of help keep you alive but um, yeah, utility was the main focus with the Blunderbuss tree. Um, it provides actually a ridiculous amount of things. This weapon is absolutely busting. I've been saying it for a while. Um, the amount of things you get from this and the amount of damage it does is just kind of insane. But um, yeah, people kind of know that by now. Uh, running mainly into the chaos side of the tree mainly to get that double down uh because like i mentioned i want to get as much utility out of this as i can so that will mean um, extra net shots or even extra claw shots etc um fortify on a roll we get tons of fortify from this uh, weapon as well and i'm going to kind of go into fortify and why it works so well with this build in a second here but on a roll um future planning bite back we got splitting grenade here instead of uh the traditional you know shrapnel blast uh net shot combo that everybody likes to run um splitting grenade is a very very strong ability and i wouldn't even say it's underrated because a lot of people use it already but um i like it for two reasons it does a lot of damage obviously uh which we can kind of combo burst around but it is really the utility that it gives me um, not only do you get movement speed from it uh, which is a pretty generous 20 percent haste but uh, it's really the threat of it. Similar to Repost, um, just the threat of Splitting Grenade and the fact that it can displace people is what I like so much about this ability. So whether that is like a stationary mage, bow or musket 
shooting at you for free. Um, nobody wants to stand in a splitting grenade. So just shooting a grenade at somebody um, will force them to at least stop shooting you for that second and kind of have to relocate to another spot, which will either give me enough time to heal or give me enough time to kind of close that gap. Um, it obviously does more damage when they are below 50%, so you can really, really time that around your burst. Um, and then it has another dot, which is just uh, pretty crazy because it lasts for 10 seconds as well. Um, but yeah, Buckshot, Artillery, Last Chance. Uh, like I mentioned, we'll kind of go into Fortify and why they're so crazy on this build in particular. Um, double Down, as I mentioned. Net Shot. Net Shot is literally one of the craziest abilities in the game. Not only does it provide a... Um, 40% slow, but when you have the perk, it also exhausts uh, the opponent. It is just incredibly strong. If it hits somebody, it also reduces its own cooldown by 20%. Um, sorry, I forgot to say 50% slow, but it degrades. But the really cool thing about this as well is that uh, the barb netting perk uh, adds another bleed to it. And it's a very, very, very strong bleed, um, especially when you have already a bleed or if you don't once this gets onto them it'll start doing the extra damage uh it literally ticks for like 540 damage so over the duration of this is going to do 1500 damage to somebody with just this ability alone in dots uh, so yeah net shot is an absolutely busted ability on top of that it also will push you back um so yeah just a absolutely insane ability and then i am running claw shot as well i'm only running in and out now, in and out is incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, this is kind of what makes up for us not running controlled breathing. And what you'll see me do a lot of the time is um, when you are in situations where you need to disengage, uh, you really want to make sure that you stay on the blunderbuss uh, weapon and don't weapon swap because not only will you lose this passive upon weapon swapping, but you'll also lose any fortifies that you have. Um, so when you're trying to book it out of there, literally just keep your blunderbuss out and sometimes I'll, you'll see in the clips i'll just shoot my claw shot at the ground just to get this buff and um you know get that extra stamina to continue to roll combat readiness and uh mobile overload are pretty good perks um that add a lot more damage but like i mentioned we don't need damage uh and i wanted to kind of forego these perks to get these two other perks uh basic shots restore more pellet per hit which is a very very strong and it works with the rune glass that we are running in our blender bus currently. And then obviously deep load is a really good perk as well. But uh, yeah, jumping into the gear and which artifact I'm deciding to use with the build, uh, we decided to go with Featherweight. Featherweight with this build in particular and the playstyle that I've gone for with the setup uh, being a more kind of close ranged brawler kind of build, Featherweight fits the build perfectly. Um, as you can see by our resistances, we are pretty much a medium setup. Um, on top of that, I am also running a uh, Shirking Fortification. Shirking Fort on top of Featherweight literally makes a light build into a, uh, a medium build because we get, I'm only running currently three pieces of it. So we get 15% right now from dodging. Um, so that'll put us to close to 1500 resistances off of that alone and then as i mentioned I, this is why the fortify on blender bus works so well because in those situations when we need to retreat um we can get another nine percent on top of that 15 percent and then um last chance as well when that uh prox will put us i think well over 2000 uh, armor or and physical or an elemental resistances excuse me so yeah, fortifies and uh, shirking fort work incredibly, incredibly well with featherweight, and um, you can literally see what I mean. You'll be able to see it even more clearly once we start to get into some uh, outnumbered fights. Um, we have all the people shooting at us, but I felt like this was a really, really good clip to kind of, and I'm sure people know how good featherweight is, but especially when you combine it with shirking fort. Um, just how good it is. This is literally a medium uh, abyss build we're fighting. And I'm telling you for a fact, uh, I can't just trade like this with uh, strength and medium builds in the game. 
you just can't in light armor you take way too much damage but um not only do we have way more damage than the abyss does uh, but you can see just how easy it is for us to just continue the sustained pressure and not really have to worry about uh how much damage we're taking from the great axe and we land a pretty nice claw shot there at the end um he misses the execute and then we get a nice little uh animation cancel there with the cannon blast but uh yeah it's pretty insane but yeah i really really like um featherweight on this setup in particular because of how close range of a build uh it is on top of that as you can see we are running a bunch of lightning harnessing perks on here um because of the other kind of theme of the build which is uh shirking lightning um, obviously all, uh, running lightning damage on our ring as well. I unfortunately wasn't able to find, uh, or New World Database doesn't have a 700 gear score version of this. Um, and I haven't checked at the kiln if I can upgrade it, but I'm probably just going to run this anyways because of just how good the perks are for me. But, um, yeah. Before I kind of get into finisher itself and why people have kind of been using it wrong, um, the perk that I've gone for is shirking lightning on mine because the idea behind the build when I originally designed it um, and the reason why I had gone for shirking lightning in the beginning is because previously before this artifact, um, bleed builds were not only kind of volatile i would say or inconsistent because of the fact that you had to not only stack up three bleeds on somebody but made sure that you land that flourish and finish um to make the build worth it essentially if you got blocked or dodge rolled it's, it's really easy to avoid flourish and finish when you know that it's coming um it made it to where a lot of fights essentially you felt like you couldn't do anything if somebody avoided your flourish and finish and the reason why I wanted to go for Shirking Lightning was to make a bleed build that wasn't entirely focused on just proccing Flourish and Finish on people. Um, you can go full into bleed with getting a bleed damage ring here and then just get the biggest uh, bleed pops you can. But like I mentioned, not only can you counter Flourish and Finish relatively easily, but it's just kind of a more boring playstyle to me. So to spice it up and to just add more overall damage to the build, um, I went for Shirking Lightning. Now, Finisher, or this weapon it's in itself, um, a lot of people are kind of going crazy over that 15% damage. Um, and before you start typing in the comments, I'm well aware that you can use this weapon as kind of an off weapon to buff your, your back weapon, right? So whether that's Fire Star for Bow, etc. cetera. Um, I had already gone for this uh, type of build and playstyle when I originally made the build and I really really enjoy it but um, one of my buddies that I've definitely shown on the channel quite a few times uh, Astro I would definitely recommend checking out the channel I will leave a link for their uh, channel in the description um, they are running a probably one of the best uh, essentially kind of off finisher setups that i've seen i, I wouldn't call it an off set of uh, off finisher setup excuse me um but they are using the damage boost that you get from finisher in a really 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 effective way um and that is with fire staff but they have a bunch of videos um up on their channel of them using that build and i highly recommend checking that out but um the thing in my opinion that makes this weapon uh so crazy isn't even the 15 percent or more damage boost that you can get from it. It's actually um, the other part that people kind of seem to miss or ignore, which is reduces flourish and finishes cooldown by 5% um, per hit. Not only do we have both of the bleed perks on a single weapon, but just to kind of put into perspective how crazy this is. And again, this is the part that people literally everybody is sleeping on in my opinion um you see we kind of go for a flourish and finish there miss our opportunity and literally in three to five seconds i think even less than that you can get flourish and finish back and just go for another one um 
and people can kind of say that they know that already about the ability as much as they want but i you know play the weapon a lot i play the game a lot and nobody i see using this weapon that takes advantage of that um we have another little fight here with another abyss user um and again similarly like the last fight i'm gonna go for a uh execute here with the flourish kind of missed my opportunity but because of how fast it can come back up right away just go for it again and, and, and kill somebody um and yeah that's the thing that makes it uh such a good artifact in my opinion um it isn't the damage boost that you get from it in my opinion it is the fact that it turns a bleed build into a consistent build you can just throw out flourishes like it's nothing um and uh if you're playing the weapon correctly uh you can get flourish back in literally three to five seconds uh, so it's pretty insane um but that isn't to say that th the damage boost that you get isn't insane in itself um as i mentioned we were used to be running shirking lightning to just add a little bit of outside damage but what this ends up doing now with that 25 percent uh boost as i mentioned before is some pretty ridiculous things another little open world encounter here against uh another abyss it's a pretty popular weapon this patch um he is running it with a void gauntlet this time but uh we managed to land the first tondo which is going to make our next tondo do extra damage he does hit us with the reap there we dodge the uh, military and get our shirking and literally look how much damage that was dude i'm not even kidding that was a 3700 damage tondo because of shuriken lightning obviously but it's it's pretty ridiculous man but yeah it's pretty insane but um just taking a look at all the pieces in order here um heavy helmet vigor omnidirectional evade and refreshing featherweight i'm probably going to end up putting shuriken fort when i upgrade this um shuriken fort landing harnessing and health on the gloves also heavies Shrinking Fort, Shrinking Energy and Vigor, some pretty crazy light legs that we found, and then Shrinking Fort, Landing Harnessing, and Thrust Conditioning. Taking a look at our jewelry, um, Passage of Time uh, for that stamina recovery, uh, Flame Protection and Refreshing. Um, and I also put a Thrust Gem in there, and this is actually a really, really good amulet for us because it makes us even tankier on top of the fact that we are running Featherweight. Um, not only do we have really, really high physical and elemental resistances, but we have um, some pretty good or really good fire damage and then um, some pretty good thrust resistance as well. Uh, so we're just like really tanky on this build as we'll kind of see in some of the OPR clips. But um, that lightning damage, hardy and keen ring, and then uh, silver and that heavy earring from our fire build with the healthy toast, refreshing toast, and nimble. Um, but yeah, finisher I kind of already showed you. Uh, I put Shrikin Lightning on mine for this build. Um, as for the upgrade perk, um, because I get a lot of questions about this, there really is no best in slot perk for this. Um, I guess if I had to choose the best overall perk, it would probably have to be Vicious or Omnidirectional Evade. Um, but there's really no... It would probably have to be Omnidirectional Evade, obviously, but even then, as you saw, we did literally a 3,700 damage Tondo with Shuriken Lightning, right? So depending on what your setup is, there's going to be a whole bunch of different options as far as pros are concerned. Um, I would really consider how you're running your finisher, what build you're running it with, um, because there's going to be a quite a few different perks that work with it. Um, but yeah, Shrinking Lightning on mine and then on or for our Blender Bus. Um, obviously, you want Keenly Jagged on there so you can benefit from that uh, finisher damage uh, easier. Um, vicious and then obviously that insane and busted exhaust of net shot. Now, I'm running a damage over time rune glass in my rapier, but I'm running the um, stamina one in our blunderbuss now this doesn't give you four stamina per pellet hit it's only just per shot but this does stack with our um future endeavors perk right so if you land all six pellets on somebody um you end up restoring 10 stamina 
six from this and then four from your moon glass gems so that plus a shirking energy proc is literally half of a roll lodge back um so it's a really really nice perk that i uh, have been using for quite a while but uh yeah that is the build um kind of went more in depth because i haven't shown this build in a while um i kind of wanted to explain all of my choices behind it but uh, yeah, let's take a look at some uh, PvP clips to see what it looks like in action. Oh, and before I forget, <laughs> I was close. Um, the Heart Rune that I'm writing uh, is uh, Cannon Blast. Not only does it fit the theme, in my opinion, of like a pirate kind of theme build with uh, Blunderbuss and Rapier, uh, but it also combos really well with our Splitting Grenade. Um, when people are clumped up, not only does splitting grenade do a pretty ridiculous amount of damage if you have some somebody or a group of people um, all bleeding, but um, it pairs really well with cannon blast. And I have the AOE version of it, um, the uh, three meter radius that does reduce the damage, but it turns it into a, an AOE shot and also inflicts burn. So you can literally kill clumps with this. Um, if you're playing in a group with this build and you guys can time your burst and um for example get a couple of people trapped in a gravel and you shoot a spinning grenade and a cannon blast they're literally all dying it's uh pretty insane how much damage you can combine with this and uh spinning grenade especially if both of the abilities crit um that's the other thing as well but uh yeah let's take a look at some of those pvp clips Alrighty, so jumping into this first clip here uh Apologies for the black bars, it's actually not my uh, video editing software, it's just a clip and this clip only that it happened to that it plays these black bars, I don't know why, but um, we got a pretty long OPR clip here to really show the build in its entirety. Um, we jump into the back line here, jump onto that healer, assassinate them really quickly, immediately claw shot onto the uh, bow in the back, finish him off with the blades as well. As I mentioned that tankiness, we are still really, really healthy after that great axe. Um, Put that maelstrom into us but we're going to go ahead and turn the pressure on to him as well almost kill him there had he stayed we would be able to kill him with a flourish and finish but we are going to try to follow down the kill land another tondo and then you see me try to uh get the cannon blast because i wasn't sure if i was going to get the kill there but we do finish him off with that flourish and finish still just in the back here causing a havoc but um a lot of the enemy team has noticed this now and you can really see that uh, Featherweight and Shirking Fort um, really coming into play now. Uh, definitely should have been done here a couple of times over for sure. But we um just tanking people. And even this Fire Staff chasing us, just barely able to escape alive there um, on 400 health. But still continuing on, we're going to go ahead and see if we can make our way into the back line again and find a couple of more kills. Shoot a uh, splitting grenade in there to see if I can get a movement speed boost. But we don't manage to land one. Get a nasty net shot onto somebody though as you're getting lit up by a bow. Finish them off really, really quickly. Go ahead and jump onto that healer there. Um, but again, I find myself kind of in the back here by myself. So I don't want to overextend too, too much um, and then get caught out and targeted by all of the archers on the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of kite a little bit and again, kind of do my job or do my best to uh, avoid as many projectiles as I can. But we're going to go ahead and make our way back into the fray again and it's looking like it's a little bit hard for my team to make a push even though we are um, finding quite a few kills back here but um, that is generally the case in OPR these days when you have um, a lot of bows and you can see I'm finding it quite hard to find any opening um, to make it in here so I'm going to try and see if I can reposition myself onto the right side find one of the bow players that we killed earlier and as soon as he uh, sees that we're going for me immediately turns tail and uh starts to jet away to shoot somebody else in the back who's not paying attention but we're gonna go ahead and see if we can save our ally here um get a pretty nice uh basic attack and a claw shot manage to land the flourish and finish i don't manage to get the kill but we do uh, find that finish with the blunder bus basic attack get out of there with the net shot as well just a clean clean kill there i'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention back over to the bow again land a pretty nice claw shot uh when he leaves himself stationary there with the random arrows um land a net shot and i again don't really want to play too aggressive because we are getting a couple of reinforcements now not only the one bow player that showed up beside him but also getting shot in the back from the musket now as well um you see what i was mentioning with uh staying on the blunderbuss bar 
we shoot that claw shot at the ground to get that stamina boost and i'm staying on there to keep my fortifies and keep that stamina boost for um the entire duration um but we are able to pretty much get out of that assault pretty healthy and then uh i'm gonna go ahead and make my way up the keep here see if i can find any more victims but a pretty crazy life so far um really the featherweight and those resistances coming in uh, not only are we insanely tanky but uh, we have that utility from the light armor role but we find our uh, next victim here which is another bow player does manage to land the sweep on us but we are going to go ahead and get a pretty nice tondo applied as well as uh dodging that sweep but it doesn't proc it there um but we do manage to put in a lot of pressure with that blunderbuss uh, and that damage boost that we have from our finisher managed to dodge it again this time and then uh, get a pretty nice kill uh, he is going to respawn and then end up kind of just trying to shoot me up from the tower. But uh, yeah, you can kind of see just how insane this build is. Uh, not only can you do probably the highest damage possible, um, the highest single target damage in the game uh, because of the bleed setup, but uh, we also have that insane amount of tankiness from Featherweight as well. Next up, though, we have... Uh, a nice little open world fight against a uh, mage and a healer um, and I'm gonna go ahead and see that or try to take out the mage now that I see that the partner hasn't really noticed that I've jumped onto the healer and uh, see if I can proc the bleeds before the uh, mage can come back but with the fortifies from the sacred and now the flail coming out um, we don't really find an opportunity there to uh, find the burst I try to go for the splitting grenade and blast or the cannon blast excuse me but again with the fortifies and the non crits on those abilities um, not really able to put too much of a dent into the healer there and the flail is going to end up becoming a problem if I kind of just stand here and try to tank them out so I kind of switch my attention over to the uh, mage actually putting a lot of damage into them but they get a burst heal right as I'm about to try to proc the bleeds but I'm doing quite a bit of damage so um, I can already tell just based off of that that I'll be able to kill this mage pretty fast um, but I need to start using my environments to my advantage uh, better or else I'm just going to end up dying um, from the healer and the mage just kind of shooting me over and over so I'm trying to play a little bit smarter here you see me kind of jumping over the uh, vine uh, section there making them kind of switch between the high road and the low road making it a little bit harder on them to hit but I get a pretty nice dodge on the flail user there and just two stacks with the uh, the bleeds were able to one shot that mage from pretty much full health and it's just left to the healer now um, we're, with that mage not just shooting us in the back we're going to see if we're able to take out the mage we get the full bleed stacks on them and we almost one shot the mage as well but again those fortifies uh, reducing all of our pre-damage before the pops and uh, preventing that one shot but um, I know that it's going to be able or be possible and again I get a lot of damage out there try to finish it off with the cannon blast as well but we aren't able to find that kill and uh, I need to just kind of stay aggressive and um, be a little bit more patient for when I'm going for uh, that burst because if they have the fortifies up and if they just have gotten a burst heal um, I won't be able to just 100 to 0 of them with the three stacks of bleed uh, so trying to see if I can get them low uh, again almost get it right there almost uh chain the bleed into a couple of uh, extra auto attacks and we do have them trapped in there but um i would find it kind of cheesy to get a kill like that so i do end up letting them out with the uh sideways evade there um we're still trying to keep up the pressure and find an opening here the mage has shown back up unfortunately so i have to uh now deal with the mage again um i'm trying to see if i can just go ahead and kill the healer look like i see it. i had three uh stacks of bleed on there um, but we just aren't able to put them out without getting some pre-damage in there before and again right there I get it um, I almost get the healer and almost get the mage as well but uh, I need to time my burst a little bit better with my shirking uh, my shirking lightning and the thing that makes it hard is it's harder to proc that with ranged abilities and uh, again I try to go for another opportunity on the mage or the healer there excuse me but um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my attention back to this mage again because they're uh, making it a little bit difficult um, to focus on finding that opening on the healer there it is right there get them um, to about half health and then you proc the bleeds get another really 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 quick finish on the mage left to the healer and there it is they go for the flail ability instead of healing themselves and then we get a beautiful little 2v1 there in the open world just an insane amount of sustain and damage on this setup 
But yeah, um, I'm not sure if you can tell by my voice, but I'm still uh, pretty sick and it makes it a little bit difficult to commentate uh, these longer videos. So I'm going to leave you with uh, this last pretty cool PvP clip here where I got into some fun with uh, a friendly uh, at the back point here. But um, please let me know what you thought of the build. If you have any questions at all, as always, please let me know in the comments. But thank you all so, so much for watching and have an amazing day.